Sting versus Seth Rollins in the main event. This is going to be a fun one. Everybody knows the story. Basically, Sting has only been in WWE um, for a good hot minute. You know, he made his debut earlier this year. Well, I guess he made his debut late late last year at Survivor Series. And then he came in and he did the whole deal with getting the guys their jobs back right before the Royal Rumble. And then he wrestled in his first match in WWE at uh, WrestleMania 31. This is a guy that honestly has been rumored um, to be joining WWE for years and years. People, when they drew out their WCW versus WWF cards, um, you know, they would always put Sting going up against the big guys. And, uh, you know, Sting was WCW. And Sting was WCW until basically he was the guy riding the ship uh, down into the middle of the ocean. You know, he was one of the guys that rode it all the way. Uh, he never made the jump, even though people always thought that he should have. And, you know, there was offers, but one thing led to another, and Sting stayed where he wanted to because he had the feelings that they just wouldn't use him uh, the way that, uh, you know, he should be used. They felt that they would kill his character, and uh, he wouldn't have any value inside of wrestling. He chose to go to TNA, um, wrestling for them for years and years before finally just saying, you know, I only got one life. Uh, I got to uh, basically, you know, give it a shot and see what happens. You know, what's the worst uh, that's going to happen by them going over there? And immediately, um, WWE takes Sting in. Uh, they use him as a big feature, um, giving him his own, um, uh, you know, greatest hits DVD, um, trying to sell that WCW um, tape library. And uh, there's going to be a documentary coming out on, on him sooner than later. Uh, he was a big hit with the uh, Monday Night War series, being able to get him interviewed and get his sides uh, to see what is going on. If you bought volume one uh, of the DVD set, you actually get to see a sit-down debate or discussion, I guess you can say, between Sting and Triple H. So I think that they've honestly got their money's worth out of this guy before even putting him into the ring. And then WrestleMania 31, um, you know, him versus Triple H was definitely one of the most discussed match, what was going to be going down. People were excited to see Sting. And uh, if Sting really had any thoughts about what WWE was going to be doing with him and if they were going to give him, you know, sort of... Uh, he talked about it in an old interview, um, basically, that, uh, you know, when Booker T came in, The Rock said, who are you? And, you know, Sting, as being the ultimate WCW legend, uh, looked at this as being the most disrespectful thing that they could have done. Even though that this was The Rock's gimmick and The Rock was saying it to anybody, no matter if it was Undertaker, Triple H, Chris Jericho, um, everybody got the who are you from The Rock to set up, you know, it doesn't matter and what your name is, or <laughs> I haven't done that in a long time, but <laughs> that was pretty fun. But, um, um, you know, just Sting chose to go other places and wrestle. Um, and uh, I, you know, WrestleMania 31, you know, he was the guy who closed out the weekend with him and Bo Dallas on the WWE Network because I think he was the one guy that people really wanted to see inside of a WWE ring at WrestleMania on the grandest stage of them all because. Nobody ever thought it was ever going to happen, and I don't think you're ever going to see another guy like that. I mean, if you think about it right now, um, some of the best wrestlers in the world are wrestling in Japan, whether if it's, you know, an American guy like AJ Styles or in Nakamura or Okada or things like that, and... You know, there's some buzz about people wanting to see these guys get signed and being brought over to WWE, but there's not this want or demand like there was for Sting for years, wanting to see Sting versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania 27, WrestleMania 28, um, the WrestleMania 30 when Sting was a free agent and he wasn't with TNA anymore. Um, there was definite, you know, want and demand for this guy. Um, Sting being brought in, uh, even though his record is 0-1, being put directly into the main event, um, Sting shows up in a magical box that's supposed to be holding Seth Rollins' statue. Um, you know, instead, Seth Rollins jumps out of the. I'm sorry, uh, Sting jumps out of the box, starts attacking Seth Rollins. Um, you know, you know, the authority bailed out of there. Um, once they make it to the back, you're supposed to immediately turn on the WWE Network. You see. Um, Seth Rollins, Triple H, and Stephanie walking through the tunnels, you know, they start yelling, you know, who does this guy think he is that he can just show up here and interrupt this um, statue ceremony and, and ruin something special that's supposed to be there for the authority. So as a way to teach him a lesson, they put Seth Rollins versus Sting into the WWE Championship match, the main event of Night of Champions. And this is supposed to be where Seth Rollins teaches Sting a lesson. Honestly, in my mind, when it comes down to it, if you think about WrestleMania 31, I think WWE loved having Sting there, but they also don't have the most... Um, what do I want to say here? What's the, They don't have the most... Uh, uh, 
it's not respect. They don't they don't have the most trust in the guy because of his age, being able to, to, to move around and wrestle a full match, especially with a um, very talented guy like Seth Rollins. I would not be surprised if we see all of the, the uh, shenanigans of WrestleMania 31 uh, with more than likely J&J Security making a return, even Kane making a return, um, probably John Cena and Triple H being in, involved in this match. Uh, there's been rumors that basically um, uh, Triple H costing Seth Rollins the championship on accident, and that's what's going to cause the grudge uh, between Rollins and Triple H to grow even more to, you know, before having a match down the road. There's no lock that the WWE Championship match has to happen in a Hell in the Cell, at the Hell in the Cell pay-per-view in Los Angeles. But honestly, you know, I just don't see Sting wrestling in Hell in the Cell. I think this is a one-off. This is all it's going to be. I see C uh, um, Seth Rollins beating Sting, keeping that championship. I wouldn't be surprised if... Um, if Sting did it. I, I remember sitting here um, watching the match where it was Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins for the WWE Championship, and I was so adamant that you know Dean Ambrose, to me, honestly, might one day become WWE Champion, but as of right now, this is the guy that hasn't even conquered the Intercontinental Championship. He hasn't even conquered the United States title. Oh, shit, he did win the United States title. But, um, you know, he hasn't been a guy to really climb his way to the top. I just didn't see him um, on that thing. It wasn't that I didn't like him. It wasn't that I was going to boo the guy if he did. And just, you know, having this huge smile on my face of just being glad that I saw something that I had never seen before when, um, Ambrose beat Rollins and, uh, you know, he, he was holding up a WWE championship. He got that moment in the sun to really sort of put him over, um, before the referee came down and said that, you know, Rollins had bumped the ref, you know, that was a disqualification. Ambrose won, but he's not going to be the champion. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see something like that. I mean, everybody went crazy seeing Sting hold up the WWE Championship over his head, saying that you know, he uh, wanted a shot at it, and um, it was a good way to end Monday Night Raw that week. But uh, lots of questions about this match. We'll have to see what goes down in the foreseeable future. But as of right now, I'm picking Seth to win this one.